So here we go, we're shooting an AK-47 without a dust cover on it, and this is totally possible. I've done it, I've shot a full auto AK. Oh yeah, it looks like it's busy, Without a yeah. dust cover. Well, that's another cool thing about the AK is if you're talented, you can make a forge out of like dirt and rocks and mud. Cut up a piece of railroad and you have your anvil and you could make a dust cover for that. This is interesting looking. It's got a side feed magazine. Okay, and we got does. a valve okay. on it. I like how they use the faucet. There's a lot yeah. of really cool parts on it. So a huge original Star Wars fan, the Wookiee Bowcaster yeah. has always been like this revered <laughs> weapon system. And you had to have the strength of a Wookiee in order to- To, to wield yeah. it. I bet the game designers probably took that into account knowing that it's like a post-apocalyptic world and you're gonna have to- Well, you're gonna be bored. You, yeah. know, you, don't, you, know, you don't have <laughs> Too TV much time or on video your hands. games. I'm gonna, I'm Let's gonna just like, machine some weapons. Right, yeah. you know? Welcome back everybody to another episode of Total Recoil. We're talking about weapons and equipment from all your favorite video games. Just all of it, not that one, but most of them, you know. My name is Israel Wright, former Green Beret, and uh, with me today is Paul Meixner. How you doing folks? Paul Meixner, former US Army infantryman, and I work as a weapons and tactics instructor both in and outside of the film industry. And today we're gonna to be looking at the weapons from Metro Exodus. It's post-apocalyptic Russia type land. Uh, I think you'll enjoy it. Paul, you ready to go? I'm ready to go, let's do it. All right, some handgun footage. All right, we got a revolver here. Yeah. Small, versatile, and effective. The revolver is a rare pre-war classic. This looks realistic to me. You know, like you got the, the hockey tape around the, the handle, which a lot of top tier operators would still do that to like the Glock handguns that they were issued just mm -hmm. to make it more tacky. So that's a very <laughs> realistic thing. And I love that you can see the welds holding the frame together and everything. I mean, the trigger, the haphazard trigger put together, this is a realistic gun. What's interesting too is like, it looks like tritium on the site. So like oh, everything yeah. everything is so rough. Everything's right? dollar store except, except for, for the, the size. Except for the glow in the dark, you know. <laughs> a three shot the, cylinder, the, wait, is that, is that? So that's what's possible? interesting too. So in a revolver, you have something called timing and there's a gear set in it, kind of like a mechanical watch. Uh -huh. Timing has to be on in order to get the cylinder in line with the barrel. Otherwise, you know, you're gonna have- As you pull the trigger, it's cycling and it's, right. that hammer's for, about for to For double hit. actions, okay. yes. For single actions, you gotta cock the hammer back, which in turn rotates the cylinder as well. Most double action revolvers are also single action revolvers as well. But what's interesting is going from three to six, you'd have to have something adjusted in the gears in order to line up that cylinder properly, because mm -hmm. otherwise it's just gonna go halfway halfway, right, you, you see what I'm saying? Shot. So, okay. I mean, it's feasible. I, I think that could happen, but you'd have to figure out how to make it done. Can Art. you just add a butt stock and a scope and just make it like a rifle essentially? Well, so first off, like uh, there's a lot of handgun hunting, but people use revolvers because it's a fixed barrel, usually more accurate than your average pistol. Most semi-automatic pistols, the barrel will move. It's either a tilting barrel or a rotating barrel. Most of them move with the action of the gun, oh. where revolvers, they're solid. They're just, they're attached permanently. and so it's much more accurate, it's not moving around. So yeah, it's totally feasible to throw a scope on there and you know reach out and touch someone with that, especially you know if you're using like a Magnum caliber or a high velocity caliber. Something that could get there. Right, now as far as throwing a buttstock on, the Colt repeating rifle, I believe, was one of the first repeating rifles and it was a cap and ball rifle. And it was very popular because it was just available, you know, before the lever actions and they were a bit more expensive. Uh -huh. It wasn't very popular because it was a great rifle. Mm -hmm. um, they had issues you gotta load, you know, powder and then a wad and then put a lead ball in there. If you don't grease the cylinders, you can ignite all the cylinders at once. And that mm. happened a lot with that rifle. Mm. The issue is you gotta be wearing gloves or heavy clothing. That cylinder that rotates, there's a tiny little gap in between the cylinder and the barrel. Okay. And debris and hot gas and oh. powder will come out the side, right? So if you're shooting like a 22 long rifle, not a big deal. If you're shooting a 500 Smith & Wesson, that could be a big deal. Okay. Flux Defense actually is doing a lot of really cool stuff with the SIG P320 that I like. And it's turning it into more of like, you're taking a pistol, and you're now increasing its accuracy and stability and range by adding either a buttstock or a stabilizing brace. And so yeah, so this is totally feasible. I would just be careful about putting my hand, you know, Where forward that, hand, that forward, forward that cylinder. Yeah, Ruger 1022 is probably one of the most popular. You just take the barrel off, and you know it locks back on. So huh. this is feasible that you know someone could do it. And I really like you know, the, the woodwork on it. I bet the game designers probably took that into account knowing that it's like a post-apocalyptic world and you're gonna have to- Well, you're gonna be bored. You know, <laughs> you, know, you, know, you, know you don't have <laughs> Too TV much time or on video your games. I'm gonna, Let's I'm gonna just like... machine some weapons. Right, yeah. you know? 
Yeah, it's cool. They got like little sling mounts on there, like the traditional look like almost shotgun style sling mounts. So again, like throwing an eight shot cylinder in there, there has to be something amazing going on with the gears inside of that, that to get the timing right. Do you know the maximum amount one could get inside a cylinder for a revolver? Well, I mean, it, it depends. Like I have a 22 revolver that I teach people how to shoot and that's a six shooter, but okay. I've seen them like hold eight and even more. So it all depends on how powerful your cartridge is and then how much metal and you know, what type of metal you're using. Cause if you get too thin, you know, you're gonna have some failures. Sure. Wire stock, you know, they're cheap, they're easy to make. You don't get as nice of a cheek weld on it. And then, you know, going with a reflexive sight versus a scope, you know, it's just quicker target acquisition. You're not gonna shoot out quite as far, but like I can shoot iron sights like accurately four or 500 meters. Would you recommend anybody to start with, maybe just with iron sights? A hundred percent, like red dots and optics are getting so popular right now. That's gonna be the wave of the future with pistols. You think so, maybe that'll just be baseline? So, but you should always know because things break, right? You know what I mean? And things are getting more and more reliable and more robust, but things break. So I always recommend starting out with iron sights and focusing on that front sight post and understanding like, you know, your target's blurry, your rear sight is blurry. Learn how to shoot with two eyes open versus one eye open. I always recommend, you know, doing iron sights first, for sure. Say you purchase a rifle, like an Armalite style rifle, which is like the best all around rifle to get because it's so modular. It's a great family firearm. Doesn't recoil much, you can shoot any caliber, you just change out some parts. It's a great all around firearm. First thing you get is the rifle and then you can put sights on it or it comes with sights. Then you put a light on it, then you put an optic on it. So it, that's one of those where you can like slowly budget out what you're doing. I've used uh, infrared and visible lasers when I was overseas. I'm mm -hmm. sure you used infrared. Did you use any visible lasers? Yep, I used some IR stuff, yeah. Well, did you use visible lasers, like a visible red or green laser? Well, yes, I remember using one of those. We also had uh, IR stuff. Right, right, with our night vision. And and yeah, yeah we rocked that quite a bit. I had a visible red laser and the only time I would use it was when Somebody wasn't listening to me. I'm like, get on the ground, get on the ground in my terrible air And then they'd see their... the red dot on them. Like, oh, I understand now. I'm gonna get on the ground. So that's that, the that's, universal language, right? That's what the visible laser was for. How do you like the recoil? How I mean, this like... looks this looks good. I mean, everything in the video game, they're they're so quick at reloading and they manage recoil. So this is obviously well. everyone in a video game is obviously a spec expert, ops guy, yeah, yeah, yeah. expert guy. Marks yeah, me. but no, I mean, it looks it looks very realistic. I like the way he's holding it. You know, a traditional revolver grip. You generally cross your thumbs. And you don't line them up, because I was always thought, you know, like, to line them up. Well, so know. for your pistol, for your semi-automatic, that's like a very popular and effective way, you know, the thumbs are right on top of each other. I'm uh -huh. trying to do lefty, lefty like you. <laughs> but for a revolver, you want to switch your thumbs because then you use your non-dominant hand to cock that hammer in case you want to take a more accurate that's shot. Strange. Because if you're using this hand, you're breaking your grip slightly. Uh -huh. You can put a suppressor on a revolver. It's not as revolver. effective as a, as a pistol, but it is. It does reduce the noise quite a bit. And it also reduces the muzzle flash, which is kind of a big deal, especially if you're shooting at night. In video games, looking through an optic, it's never like, in some video games, I know it's like you can see the breathing a little bit of the guy, so that makes it a little bit more. Some first person shooters emphasize that a little bit more. Some don't. Now, I really like this. I really like the reload. If you load a revolver and then you just want to take the rounds out without firing, generally gravity will take them out. You're keeping your muzzle in a safe direction, you just tilt the revolver and the rounds just fall out. But after you fired them, that casing expands. And so in the back, you have this plunger that you push. And then it'll that push will, the rounds yep, out. It'll push them out and they might not all come out, but then they'll at least be far enough out that you can pull them out. Mm -hmm. But often they'll, they'll pop out. Oh, okay. I mean, they're getting a lot right here. Obviously this is all fantastical, but like, it, I believe it, you know? And that's right. like the worst thing for me when like, I see something that looks impossible or it doesn't make any sense and then it just completely takes me out of it. But so it has, far- It has its own lot of internal consistency. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so with this, there's a lot of firearms. Definitely a lot came out during World War II. In like, but this looks almost like a World War One kind of thing. That with that solid magazine, that open magazine, that's just like a. Well, I think that's stylized slide. for the game, and I, I like it because oh, okay. it shows how you know you stagger rounds in a magazine. I don't like it because it's gonna malfunction a lot. Yeah, that's gonna like that's gonna get gunk in it. Because it's open, and gonna, and there's gonna yeah. be stuff getting in there. Yeah. So in 1939, the Brits were like, we need a submachine gun. And they were buying uh, Thompson machine guns from the US for like $200 a pop. And that's like crazy expensive. They came up with the Sterling submachine gun. They had a few others that were fed from the side and they were cheap and they were easy to produce and they were reasonably reliable for what they were paying for them. And they were able to pump them out like crazy. Hmm. And so that's a great example of a magazine side fed uh, submachine gun that this looks like it's based off of. The wire stock, those are great. You know, that is just a piece of bar metal that they bend around 
and it works. You know, I've fired a lot of AKs with folding, you know, wire stocks and folding bar stocks like that. You don't get the best cheek weld, but it does stabilize the firearm a lot better. It makes you more accurate with it. That loud bang that people hear, a lot of people think that's the explosion or the bullet breaking the sound barrier. The crack for, for supersonic rounds, yeah, that's the, the bullet breaking the sound barrier. But the loud bang you hear is actually the hot gases leaving the barrel hmm. and then as soon as they hit the ambient temperature of the atmosphere it has that chain reaction what the suppressor does is it has all these internal baffles in it which help cool the gas as it's coming out and the suppressor generally does two things great person to check out on youtube is kevin owens he's a former special operator who hmm. worked for both the irish and the american military he's nice. got some great stories but one of his stories he got up to a rooftop in a battle in iraq and somebody was shooting at him and he didn't have a suppressor on his rifle, so then he turned and shot at them, but it was night out. But those Mark 18s, those huge muzzle blasts of the unburnt powder, and all of a sudden everybody started shooting at him because they saw right away where it was. <laughs> Everything looks realistic on this except for like the exposed magazine. You're gonna get so much junk and gunk in there. So the US military is coming up with this new system that it's basically like a heads up display with night vision and then there's a camera on your rifle. It's no longer like letting everybody else with night vision know where you're at. So you kind of aim with that and it's kind of interesting. I haven't used it yet, hmm. but it looks fascinating. Did you ever use the saw? Yep, I was a saw gunner for 18 months. I only ever used it in training and then familiarization after gotcha. that. I used to do raids with the saw. I treated it like an M4. And run in with, you know, and that's not doctrine, but you know, doctrine, Sometimes it doesn't apply when you're on the ground in real life. <laughs> so we would have 200 round drum magazines that we would put on and it was a plastic drum and it would kind of rattle when you were running and we like to use these 100 round nut sacks, we call them. Usually I would carry like two 200 round drums and like four to eight nut sacks on me. <laughs> and then I'd have another 2000 rounds in a backpack that I'd leave in a truck or something. And I was a big boy too, I carried a lot of, a lot of ammo. This, this is realistic, this looks cool. You know, I believe this. It's gotta be noisy though, if that's a metal tin. And if it's not the perfect tolerances, those rounds are gonna be moving back and forth and you're gonna- Yeah, uh, nobody sh cares about the noise. Right? Well, especially if you start shooting, apocalyptic. you know? The AK-47. AK platform, universally recognized all around the world. It's just a great design. It's super durable. Just got promoted to E4 in Kuwait. I was issued an AK-47 for weapons familiarization for my platoon. Yeah. In case we ran out of ammo or something, we could pick one up and use that. But more, it was, so that way we could make sure once we did a raid and we picked up weapons off of bodies or found a cache of weapons that we knew they were clear. Open magazine there, or at least maybe something like a window. Any debris that's in that magazine is gonna get in. While the AK is very, very durable and it has a, you know, a great reputation for reliability, it can also jam. It can jam sure. if you don't take care of it, any weapon system if you any don't take care system. of it. You get mud in it, you know, it's it's eventually gonna stop working. I like how the previous weapons we've seen so far, they look like they've been cobbled together, but I'm sure in the post-apocalyptic There's gonna be AKs. Future, There's gonna be AKs, AKs just like lying around. That gonna, and a cockroach. You know, yeah. yeah, honestly, like a semi-auto version is just a great ranch gun. You know, if you live in the middle of nowhere and you want something that always works, shoots a good intermediate caliber, you can deal with, you know, human and animal predators alike. It's just a great, great rifle to throw in your truck, put in a case, forget about it, you know? Of course, lock your truck up and everything, but right. like- it's, Don't it's, forget about it. I know to a lot of people, these firearms look scary, but it's just a modern firearm. That's all it is. Sure. It's just a modern rifle, a great design. Yeah. It really is. Now it's it looks like a DMR accurate. or something like that, you know? Yeah, you know, yeah. Getting a little more marksmanship. Because of the, the giant bolt and everything, it's still not as accurate as like an SVD. You can reach out much further with the longer barrel, it needs more velocity. I really like the scope mount, that's realistic. Like every AK I've ever used has this, it's this side mount because that dust cover comes off and you want to be able to have access to it. They're very stable, they hold a zero, they work really well. There you go, drum mags. Drum mags are a big thing. There's a lot of different drum mags. Some work better than others. 2004, I bought a Beta C mag. And that's like, you can see it in that uh, Kevin Costner, Kurt Russell, Elvis action movie, they use them. And, oh. But you, you have to use graphite powder to keep it lubricated. Not as reliable, generally speaking, as most uh, box magazines are. But yeah, you can hold a lot more rounds. It does make the weapon a lot heavier. And I like that they have the cleaning tube, the cleaning rod, and clear instructions in the barrel with it. A lot of AKs come with those on it. Oh, nice. But the only thing I'm not a fan of with this is it doesn't have a last round uh, bolt hold open. Like, you know, when we're shooting our M4s, the last round, generally speaking, the bolt locks to the rear, you know right away, you can do your mag change. With these, you gotta, most people go to a click and you're like, oh, I gotta change the magazine. Oh, okay. Then, so here we go, we're shooting an AK-47 without a dust cover on it. And this is totally possible. I've done it, I've shot a full auto AK. Oh yeah, it looks like it's without busy. Without a yeah. dust cover. This is totally doable. And if you saw one and you needed to use it, you could. 
I would find a dust cover for it as soon as possible, especially if you're in an adverse environment because you're going to get crap in there. In this and game, they're probably just like lying around. <laughs> yeah, everywhere. Well, that's another cool thing about the AK is if you're talented, you can make a forage out of like dirt and rocks and mud. Cut up a piece of railroad and you have your anvil and you could make a dust cover for that. Whoa. Yeah, this is hilarious. That's so I, cute. I like this. He has kind eyes. Yeah, he does have kind You know, he's, he's just like, hey man, do you got any food? He, hey, was, trying, he was trying he was to ask him. He, he was like, trying to, yeah, ask him if he needs directions. He needs directions. Hey, so like, can I help you? Oh God, no. <laughs> oh my gosh. What is that? What are, what are we I think these are former are these? dudes, former friends. Former dudes, yeah. former homies. Former humans. Pour one out for my homies. The recoil impulse looks good. Everything looks fine on this. The mag change was decent. You know, he's hitting the paddle in the back. If you get really good at it, you can just like cock it out with another, or knock Plop it, it out. out, yeah, with another magazine. But like, I feel like in this environment, you'd want to have like a dump pouch or something. I would want to take the mag out, put another one in and put my empty mag back. This is interesting looking. It's got a side feed magazine. Okay, and we got does. a valve okay. on it. I like how they use the faucet. There's a lot yeah. of really cool parts on it. You know, the front reminds me of when George Lucas built the first lightsabers. And maybe those are like cooling fins, but he used camera parts. That looks like a lightsaber yeah, right there. Right? Yeah, but they were made out of antique camera parts, <laughs> the first lightsabers. And they look, they're so cool. In its most basic form, the Ashot is a compact. Looks like a pistol shot. Yeah, I mean, this is totally doable. This looks like just somebody built this. It looks very realistic. I like yeah, the grip. We got the built, you know. the, just that bent metal you were referring to. Mm -hmm. I love the name, a shot. These old school elephant guns, which this reminds me of. I mean, they're very fancy. They're made. Most of them were made in England. They have nice scroll work. We're talking like you know, wood steel barrels or pattern welded barrels. But the bullets are just massive. They're wow. just these huge chunks of lead, and they weren't for hunting. They were like the backup rifle you had with your hunting rifle for when you missed the water buffalo. Oh, you got a like quad go tube. Quad. I, do we have quad tube They do, uh, they, they do shotguns? exist. Uh, Lancaster four barrel shotgun. Lancaster is probably one of the more famous ones. And a lot of them are made in England. If you look up like the real versions of these, they're absolutely beautiful. Wow. Like very expensive, handmade, a lot of detail you know, etching and, and scroll work on it and gold inlays and beautiful wood grain patterns in the stock. Not like this, <laughs> but these are great. I like this industrial look. I love the hockey tape on everything. Because <laughs> it, it, it's real, it, it works. I've done that to a lot of different pistol grips. The shotgun is devastating. Clint Smith, he's a trainer at Thunder Ranch, somebody I hope to take a class from someday. Just, he's a legend and I'm gonna paraphrase here, but pistols put holes in people, rifles put holes through people, and shotguns tear chunks of <laughs> off of people. <laughs> So, shotguns are very effective close up. That guy was surrendering. Come on, are we really just gonna? I mean, take no prisoners, right? Like, how, how can you be sure? Maybe, well, he, it is maybe the, he just finished some Chernobyl and he's is gonna the, yep. stab you in the back. Yep. And that was his dog just coming in for, for a he snack. Was just, he was just wondering what was up. Brutal. He was asking if he needed directions. Brutal. <laughs> Ooh, is this the air gun? We're looking at the air gun now. Okay. So air guns are feasible, but again, this is one of the weapons that I would use to find a better weapon. Because unless you have a crap load of compressed air or compressed nitrogen or some type of compressed gas, which is gonna add bulk and weight to it, you're not gonna fire very many rounds that can take down a human target. Do we have lethal air guns? So, have there ever been? Well, in the 1700s, there was a repeating air gun. I think Lewis and Clark used one in like the real early 1800s when they were doing their exploration of oh, you know the, the Lewis, West. Lewis and Clark, okay. Yeah. And you can hunt with them. They make them up to 50 caliber. You can take down a buffalo with an air gun, but like that's it. You know what I mean? It looks cool. And it <laughs> yeah, looks it looks very, it's it very steampunk. That's yeah. a tiny little air tank. I love the water spout, you know? I mean, it doesn't have to be a water spout. Like that could be a gas valve. That could be just about anything. And I like the blue tape wrapped around it. You just so, love that tape, don't you? I, well, it's, it works. Oh, tape it works. So I'm not good. like, a, oh, everything has to tape, look huh? perfect, you know? I'm, everything doesn't have to look great. So some night vision that you mount will have a reticle, but then you have to make sure it's zeroed. So Helica magazines are, are real things. Actually, I didn't know these things existed, but I did a movie in Korea called Take Point. I play this like Scottish mercenary. The North Koreans we were fighting in this had these huge Helica magazines. The cool thing about a Helica magazine, it's it's like, you know, a DNA strand or a tornado. It's this like spiral and you can hold a lot of ammunition in it. Hmm. This looks cool. This looks cool. I could see like getting a couple, you know, human sized shots off of this. It looks heavy. Yeah, it looks very heavy. Things made out of wrought iron in this game. Now in the game, is this supposed to be quiet too? The valve is really neat. I really like the valve on that. 
So to tell us in the comments, I've never played this game, but I wonder if, if you pump it more, if it gives more damage, maybe to your enemies. They have scopes now that do all the math for you and like, it's nuts. Tell you about it. Yeah, I'll tell you what. Man. It's like self-driving cars. It's kind of scary. <laughs> okay, look at that magazine. What's going on here? I love the gauge. You can see the air, the air pressure yep. gauge dropping Move. down. Is it another thing that's cool that they're showing here? is that it takes some effort. Now it looks All like right. we got like a bit of a crossbow kind of thing. So a huge original Star Wars fan, the Wookiee Bowcaster yeah. has always been like this revered <laughs> weapon system. And you had to have the strength of a Wookiee in order to- To, to wield yeah. it. So I use crossbows. I deer hunt with a crossbow. I have a recurve um, and I'd like to get a longbow and a compound at some point. Some people would judge me like hardcore archers, like, oh, you shouldn't. Like, Hey man, I'm not good enough yet with my recurve. I'll get there, but like, I like venison and it's legal to hunt with a crossbow. So those things over there are called cams. In the car, unless you have an electric car, you have something called cams and there's like lobes on one side. And so like, as it turns around, that's what lifts the cylinders up and down the height. And so it's the same thing as you're pulling back, it puts different pressure on it. A long bow, it gets harder and harder and harder. A recurve isn't quite as bad, yep. but a compound bow, it gets difficult, it's difficult. And once you get it back to a certain part, those cams let up. Before there was firearms, before we sure. had powder and everything, yep. it took a lot of skill to become a competent archer, but you could hand anybody a crossbow as long as they could aim. On top of that, you could get a crossbow that would fire a bolt much further and with much more force than a, a bow and arrow because you could use a gear system to cock it back, oh, okay. you know, or you could get a couple guys like pull it up and then put it into place. Just make sure your foot's not in the way. <laughs> Twang and Bang did a review of this YouTuber Twang and Bang where it takes an armor light rifle receiver. It uses the trigger control group from a, from an AR-15 and it's it's like this tactical. It's not tactical. That's very uh, that's very metro. -esque. It, it looks oh, it would fit right in this game. It looks amazing. The Numo Helsing. So this is a pneumatic. We're now into a air power. Air, yep, which those exist. You know, there are, there are a couple different types of spear gun. A lot of them actually use shock cord or like a like a bungee cord, something you'd use as a tourniquet to draw blood or whatever. Yeah. You know, but then there are like harpoon. Technically, they're not a crossbow, but they launch like a crossbow bolt or a dart. A, with bolt, a bolt air. caster yeah. in some way. Oh, look at how easy it is to, to cock that back though. There's no it's just way. Just a little bit of, you know, There's whatever. No way. Like you can buy these like pistol crossbows. You like cock back the butt stock, but I would not want to shoot a person with one of those. I would want something with a lot more force behind it. I have an optic on my crossbow. It's totally feasible for the for the range that you're doing. You just zero it and you know make sure you're good to go before you go out. And yeah. Uh -huh. Now we, is he shooting explosive bolts right there? Is it the yeah, it looks like he's got exploding thing. tips. They, they, I would hope so against a radioactive post-apocalyptic Russian bear. Yeah, they make them, but you got to think that much weight up front is going to completely throw off like your zero unless you have different reticles. For right. It. It's going to be a lot You'd heavier. have to compensate for it. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. The only issue I have with this in realism, unless, you know, unless your character is also drinking the Chernobyl and he's just able to get that, <laughs> get that adrenaline. To... Well, Paul, what did you think about the footage that we saw from Metro Exodus? That was cool. I, I really liked it. I thought everything, like my favorite part, it sounds weird, but was the welds. Like the arc weld, like the, the just detail. The, 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 yeah, it had incredible detail and everything for the most part looked really realistic. I'd believe it. I, would, I think I'd enjoy playing that game. Nice. Folks, if you want to see more great videos like this, go to Gameology's Facebook and YouTube page. And if you want to hang out with me a little bit more, go over to twitch.tv slash myhappyself. Paul, how can they get a hold of you? Uh, you can find me on Instagram. My account is mav11b, M-A-V-1-1-B. And that's, uh, that's about it. Folks, we'll see you on the next one. Take care. You know, wiggling as it goes back into the gas tube, like the gas tube's missing. So it just, it, do it still works. Do that a couple works. more times? Just do it. Let's <laughs> we'll put, put that on replay. <coughs> We'll loop it. <laughs> <laughs>